to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ he who does not love does not know god for god is love. 1 John chapter 4, verse number 8. We welcome you today to our second part in the study of 1 John. Today we're thinking about God as the source of love and how Christians must walk in and live that type of love in their life every day. And so we want to invite you to find your Bible, have it ready, as we're going to be looking to 1 John today in our study of God is love. As always, today's lesson is being brought to you by members of the Churches of Christ and congregations in your local area as well. And so we want to invite you to visit the Church of Christ in your area. You'll find people there who love God, who are concerned about doing what the Bible says, and who have a deep love for lost souls. Won't you check out their assembly on Sunday or Wednesday? You'd be an honored guest at any of their services. If you've got a question about the scriptures, you'd like to study more about salvation or the church or any subject, you'll find people there who'd be happy to sit down and search the scriptures with you. Here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd also like to help you in your journey to know God and His Word better. will not you check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, we have a wide variety of good Bible study material. We have over 500 lessons that are available uh, to watch anytime on the Internet. We have DVDs and CDs, transcripts, study questions. All of it's available to you free of charge. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, on DVD or CD or a digital download, you can access that from the website. Just visit our media request form. We'll be glad to make that available to you free of charge. As we think today about this powerful and encouraging message, God is love. How that ought to lift our spirits to know the type of God we serve is the essence of what love is all about. You know, everybody wants to be loved, right? I want to be loved. You want to be loved. We want to give that love to others. And friend, all of that stems from God, who is the true source of love. Now, if you doubt that, look at 1 John 3, verse 1. Look at God's amazing love demonstrated for you. 1 John 3, verse 1, the Bible says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we can be called children of God. The Bible goes on to say, Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know Him. Look at the love of God. What do you mean? God's love was given in His Son so that I could be an adopted son or daughter of God. Romans 5 verses 6 through 8, While we were still without strength, in due time, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone might dare to die. But listen to this. But God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. When I was unlovely, when I had stabbed God in the back, when I had lived a life of sin, that's when God extended His love through Jesus Christ. Do you remember that verse? John three sixteen. God so loved the world, what? He gave. Gave what? His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And friend, that, that kind of love begins at the outset by encouraging us on who God is. God gave us His best so that we could know Him, know His love, and live a life that brings honor to Him. Now, that type of love ought to cause us to live a pure life. We want to live a pure life and walk in love ourselves, right? Look at 1 John chapter 3, verse number 3. How do you respond to the love of God? 1 John 3, verse 3 says, And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. And so when I think about the love of God, that causes me to, to consider all that God did, how much He cares for me, how much His Son suffered, and that makes me 
want to live a life of purity and hope in view of God's promises. You see, that's what God wants. What does God ask of me and you? To live a good life. 1 Peter 1 verse 15. As He who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. The Bible clearly teaches that we are to walk in holiness. Without holiness, no one can see God. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. I am to walk in the footsteps of of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 2, verse 21 and 22, I'm to be a, a shining light for the Lord. Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine that others may see our good works and glorify God in that. And so as a Christian, living this type of life based on love causes me to live a pure life. And, and, and when I realize the love of God, friend, that makes me want to avoid sin. Think about this with me. Consider every, everything Jesus went through to deal with the sin problem. Beaten, mocked, spit upon, stripes placed on His back, hands and, knee, and feet are nailed to a cross. He hung in agony, struggled for every breath until He said those uh, powerful words, It is finished. The price was paid. Out of love, God sent His Son to do that. And friend, when I walk in love, when I realize that, that makes me want to avoid a life of sin, right? Look in 1 John chapter 3 and notice what John says in verse number 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. When I think about all that Jesus came to this earth for, to deal with the sin problem, I don't want to go back and live a life of sin. The Bible tells us we've been cleansed of that. Revelation 1 verse 5, our sins have been forgiven. 1 John 1 verses 7 and 8. And, and when I put that in perspective, that makes me want to live in such a way that I avoid a life of sin. Now, does that mean that it's impossible for me to sin? That's not the idea. Sometimes people misuse 1 John 3 verse 9 to teach that, but that's not true. Look at 1 John chapter 3 verse number 9. John then says, as he deals with this idea of sin and practicing righteousness. He says in verse number 9, He who has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he's been born of God. This is not the idea that sin is not an option, but if we, the idea of practicing righteousness, 1 John 3, verse 7 and 8, is the same idea as practicing sin. The word for sin is a present tense, durative, or continual action. The idea means when I consider the love of God, when I consider what Jesus did, and when I think about all that He went through to, to, to make sin, to remove sin and to give me the hope of heaven, I can't, I don't want to. It's, it ought to be impossible for a Christian to go back to a life of sin. And so the idea of cannot sin is cannot continue in sin. We know John's not saying that a Christian cannot sin at all, for John's already said in 1 John 1, verses 7 through 10, if we say we have no sin, we make God a liar and the truth's not in us. So John's already said we're going to sin from time to time. 1 John 2, verses 1 and 2, he himself is the propitiation for our sins. And so for the Christian, we do have an advocate with the Father. But sometimes people take verses like these and they want to pull them out of their context and teach doctrines such as once saved, always saved, that once you're a Christian, you can never sin and be lost. Well, again, it's practicing. It's continuing in sin. It's living a life of sin. And the Bible does teach. Please hear me well today. The Bible does teach that a Christian can so sin as to be lost. Let me show you that in the Bible. Look in your Bible in Galatians chapter 5 with me for just a moment. The Bible does not at all teach that a Christian can never sin such as to be lost. In fact, the Bible warns us multiple times that we can. Galatians 5 verse 4, notice these words. He's writing to Christians. He's writing to the Christians in Galatia, Galatians 1 verses 1 and 2. And here's what he says. To these Christians, you have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, listen now, you have fallen from grace. Men say you can't fall from grace. In fact, that's synonymous with once saved, always saved. What does God say? Two Christians, God said, you have 
fallen from grace. Can a Christian so sin as to be lost? Acts chapter 8, verse 20 through 22, Simon is baptized. Simon sins by trying to gift the Holy, by, by the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peter tells him in Acts 8, verse 20 through 22, listen to a Christian. Peter said, your money perish, don't miss this, with you. Can a Christian so sin as to be lost and perish? Simon was in that state. If it can happen once, then friend, that's a possibility. And we know throughout the scripture that does the scriptures do teach that. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12, Paul would say, take heed lest you fall. Why do we need to take heed if we can't fall? Revelation 3, verses 4 and 5, some are warned if they do not continue to do God's will, their names can be blotted out of the book of life. Again, talking to Christians, they can have their name removed from the book of life. And so John is telling us, when you consider God's love and all that He's done for you, why would you ever want to go back to a life of sin? If you think about that, you cannot go back and continue to live a life of sin. Now, what then does it mean to really walk in love? How does a Christian live a life of love? Well, friend, it's not in word only. It's in action. Look in 1 John 3, verse number 18. This describes it for us. John says in 1 John 3, verse 18, my little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. You know, someone might say, I love you. But really backing that up, really proving that is a different story. Anybody can mouth those words. Uh, a teenager can write that a hundred times on the front of their notebook. I love so-and-so. Well, does that really mean they love them? Do they even understand what that means? What does it mean when you say, I love God? He who says he loves him must do what God tells him to do. We've not only got to love Him in word, but in deed and truth and in action. Uh, 1 John 3, verse 18. James 2, verse 14. We've got to keep His commandments. John, listen to Jesus. John 14, verse 15. Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, the Bible clearly teaches, as well as the book of John, that to love God, I've got to do what He says. Look in 1 John chapter 3, verse number 24. John says this in 1 John chapter 3, verse number 24. Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him, and by this, notice this, by this we know that he abides in us by his Spirit whom he has given us. And so when we keep his commandments, we can know we're abiding in God. You've got to do what the Bible says. You've got to do what the Bible says to become a Christian, right? Listen to what Jesus said you've got to do to become a Christian. Jesus said in Mark 16, 16, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. First time the gospel is preached by the apostles in Acts chapter 2. Peter stands up with the eleven. They cry out, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And the answer is clarion. Repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Paul is told in Acts twenty two sixteen, Why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. We are baptized into Christ. Galatians 3, verse 27. And so if I love God, must I do what Jesus said to be saved and to become a Christian? Well, absolutely. Must I continue to do that? Romans 6, verse 4 says, We rise out of that watery grave to walk in newness of life. I've got to continue to follow the Lord. I've got to continue to love Him, and I've got to make sure that my life is being lived in such a way that I honor God. And, and part of that, John is going to tell us, is you've got to beware of people who might try to steer you off that path. To walk in love, you've got to test the Spirit. You've got to make sure what you're being taught is true to God's Word. Look in 1 John chapter 4, and notice what John here says. John says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. Why? Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. There's a lot of people who may be teaching things that are not right. There's a lot of people who may say, to be saved, you've got to do this. You need to say the sinner's prayer and, put, and send in a lot of money. Well, is that what the Bible says? Say the sinner's prayer. Where's that at in the Scripture? You don't find it. A lot of ideas of men 
that are mentioned in the Bible, or not mentioned in the Bible, that people say you've got to do, people may tell you to do this, be pleasing to God, you've got, wait a minute now, where's that at in the Bible? How do you test the spirits? Well, God's told us, right? Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. How do you prove truth from error, right from wrong? You've got to have a standard. God's Word is truth. John chapter 8, verse 32. John 17, verse 17. I have the Bible, and I can search the Scriptures daily to see if what I'm being told is true to the Word of God. And so every person has the ability to check and make sure what somebody's telling them is true. Check it for yourself. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed. But friend, here's the powerful thing about that. Walking in love, making sure we're doing what God says, that means that the power is in God, not in us. What a great thing that is. Look in 1 John chapter 4, and I want you to notice what the Bible says about that power in verse number 4. Look at 1 John 4, verse number 4. John says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, notice this, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Friend, that means that our power as a Christian is not found in the world, it's found in God. And if God's our source of power, we have unlimited uh, benefits and, and power, power to what we do. Think about Philippians 4.13. Paul said this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Christian, because he puts his trust and power in God, can overcome anything. We're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Ephesians 3, verse 20 and 21. And thus the Christian can say, God is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Hebrews 13, verses 5 and 6. And friend, when we walk in love, the verse we began with, we're walking in God. He who does not love does not know God. Why? For God is love. I've got to live a life full of love as well. And that means if you love God, you've got to love your brothers and sisters in Christ. Sometimes selfishness gets in the way. Sometimes our own ideals get in the way. Sometimes hurt and pain get in the way. As Christians, it's not just about me anymore. I've got to love God, I've got to love the Lord Jesus Christ, but I also have to love others in the family of God as well. Look in 1 John chapter 4, and I want you to see what John says in verses 21 following. 1 John chapter 4, look in verse 20 and 21. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. Friend, if you say you love God, you've got to love people in God's family. You see, we're all created in the image of God. As God's servants, we're to love each other. We're to strengthen we're to uplift and we're to encourage one another. This is why Paul would say, or the Hebrew writer would say, let brotherly love continue. Our Lord encouraged us in this when He said, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know you are my disciples. And do you remember those two premier commandments? Mark chapter 12, Jesus is asked by a lawyer, a student of the law, a scribe, What's the greatest commandment? Jesus gives him two. The first is, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second, like unto it, is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. And friend, that's not a burden. That's not something that's hard for me to do. That's something a Christian ought to be proud to do. Look in 1 John chapter 5, verse number 3. The Bible says this, For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. God didn't place a, a, a burden on me that I can't carry, something that's hard to do. Friend, we ought to want to love God and love other people. And it ought to be a joy to do that. Christianity is a joy. With the Christian life, you have the best life ever. John 10, verse 10, Jesus said, I came that you may have life 
and have it more abundantly. You've got the abundant life. All spiritual blessings are yours in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 1 verse 3. You've got everything you need for life and godliness, joy, happiness, peace, forgiveness. Don't look at that life as a burden. That life liberates and frees us so that we can live a life of peace and joy and happiness and ultimately so that you can have the victory. And that's exactly what John says next. Look at 1 John chapter 5, verse number 4. What's great about the Christian life, not only is it not a burden, it brings us victory. Verse number 4 of 1 John 5 says this, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Our faith in God. That's what overcomes this whole world. The world and all that's in it, we've already seen, is passing away. 1 John 2, verses 15 through 17. I, my interest and my goals are not to be on this world. That's, what it's, that's not what it's about. How then do you overcome it? Faith is the victory. Romans 10, 17 tells us what faith is and where we get it. We talk about faith, that's sometimes a, a word that's used a lot by religious people, but what is faith really? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. We get it from studying the Bible, Romans 10, verse 17. What is it? It's our ability to trust God. Hebrews 11, verse 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. It's based on substance and evidence of creation of God in His Word and in the natural world. And it's what causes me to trust God. Without it, I've got no hope. He who comes to God, must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And if I have that, if I'm convicted and I'm living my life based on that conviction of God and His Word, and friend, there's nothing the Christian can't face in this life and overcome with God's help. And friend, the good news is, as Christians, as I walk in faith, as I try to live the life God wants me to live, you can have confidence of your salvation. Not confidence in self, confidence in God and your salvation. You know, sometimes I we talk to Christians or seen people in my own life who were you to ask him, are you saved? They'd say probably. Are you saved? Maybe. Are you saved? I hope so. That's not the idea the Bible teaches. We can know and we can be confident in our salvation. Look at first John chapter five, verse number thirteen. Christianity is not a glorified maybe. Look in first John three excuse me, 1 John 5, verse number 13. One of the reasons John wrote, he says, These things I've written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may listen to this, know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. We can know. You can know you're saved. How do you know? Because you can know the truth. And the truth will make you free, right? John 8, verse 32. You can understand. Do not be ignorant, but understand the will of the Lord. Ephesians 5, 17. You can study 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. You can search the Scriptures and our confidence is based on our faith in God and His Word. And when I'm walking in the light, when I'm walking in love, walking in life, friend, I can have confidence in that salvation. I want you to think today about your own life, your own confidence, your own salvation. Where are you at with that? There's a lot of people. Hope you'll listen real carefully to me. There's a lot of people who are walking through life, not knowing where they're going, not considering much about the future, aimless, purposeless, hopeless sometimes. A lot of people are living a life that way. That's not the Christian life. The Christian life has purpose. It has meaning. Our goal is to glorify God and live a life that brings honor to Him, and the end result of that is eternal life. Friend, do you have that hope? Everybody needs hope. We've all learned that, haven't we? You've got to have hope. You've got to have something to look forward to. We tell ourselves things are going to get better, right? And they will for the child of God. No more pain in heaven. Here's what it'll be. No more pain. No more death. No more sorrow. No more sickness. No more sin. All the former things have passed away. Revelation 21, verses 3 and 4. And so today we ask you, are you a Christian? Are you walking in the light? 
obeying God's commands, walking in love, and doing what God wants you to do. If you're not a child of God, we'd love to study more about that with you. Do you know what you need to do to become a Christian? The Bible teaches you've got to hear God's Word. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, 17. That faith without which we can't please God comes from hearing the Word of God. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Once I've read and studied God's Word, then I must believe Jesus is the Savior of the world. John 8, verse 24, Jesus said, Unless you believe that I am He, you'll surely die in your sins. Do you believe Christ, that He's the way, the truth, and the life? Are you willing to repent and turn from sin and turn to God? Jesus said in Luke 13, verse 3, Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Having repented of sin, would you make that good confession? I believe with all my heart that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Matthew 10, verse 32, 33. Uh, Acts 8, verse 36 and 37, just like the Ethiopian eunuch said. And would you, to be in Christ, to have every sin washed away, and to have your name written in the book of life, would you be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins? It's what Jesus said you've got to do. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. John chapter 3, verse number 5. And then rising out of that watery grave to live a new life, a life of truth and a life of love based on God's love and God's truth. And so if you're not a child of God, we encourage you to become one today. And for those of us who are trying to live as Christians every day, live like God wants us to, friend, let's walk in that light. There's just something great about going on a beautiful day when the sun's shining. There's just something that lifts your spirit so much to go out and enjoy that. Living the Christian life is a life of joy and happiness and peace based on God and His promises. And so if we can help you in any way, let us know. And friend, we hope you'll join us next time as we study more from God's divine Word. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and Internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the